Hello, Suzanne. We're doing a, another show tonight. And what are you? Uh, what are we going to discuss tonight? I've been I've been asked to discuss cartoons. Okay. The well, question that we got from the audience was that people wondered which cartoons you like the most and why. Um. Well, see, in order in order to do that, I have to explain my um. Uh, history of the cartoon exposure over time uh, to um, to arrive at uh, which ones I like best or least. Okay, well, you go ahead. You can tell us any way that's, uh, that makes more sense to you. Probably the very first time I saw one was uh, uh, on TV. Now, in those days, most of the cartoons uh, were presented by live hosts, um, you, know, you know, regular people. Um, so it was interesting to see this contrast, this different kind of, uh, of movement among um, animated uh, in, in contrast to uh, um, living beings. One of the most popular to come my way when I was very little was the uh, Mickey Mouse Club. Okay, so that was the first time you saw a cartoon? Or the first time you remember? I might have... I might have channel hopped earlier and just happened to catch in on the animated animals. Uh, do you remember which one? Um, those that were shown on uh, uh, Mickey Mouse and the uh, uh, Mighty Mouse uh, uh, cartoon shows. Which one did you like more, Mickey Mouse or Mighty Mouse? Well, by the time Mighty Mouse came along, I had already been exposed to the Superman uh, uh, a flying hero. Um, Mighty Mouse was also an aerialist. So I liked him more than I liked uh, the, the Mickey Mouse attractions. Um, but also uh, something disturbing about the Mighty Mouse cartoons was that the, uh, the adversaries would um, involve innocent living beings, usually animals, and get them uh, in dire predictions with the uh, with dramatic music in the background. Uh, I remember there were a few examples of his uh, of of an adversary uh, letting loose uh, a carriage or a cradle of baby animals who would would who would be scream, screaming and crying for their lives, and uh, I, I I I grew frightened and sad at that. Okay, so the the animals in distress made you sad. Yes, but Mighty Mouse would save them. He did, but not but not before all the viewers were exposed to the plight of these innocent animals who were who, who were uh, crying and screaming for their lives. And if they were in trouble, he wouldn't need to save them. Then, then you don't have a cartoon. No cartoons that I saw later on um, didn't have nearly as much uh, conspiracy or uh, malice uh, uh, toward uh, toward other characters. Um, the Hanna-Barbera uh, cartoons, I think I liked the, the best as a child because they were, they were family friendly, the stories were sensible, and, uh, and, and the characters uh, were rather believable and down to earth. Um, well, the overwhelming majority of them um, were animals, but um, but but animals that normally were four-legged were only two-legged in the cartoons. So there, they were anthropomorphic again. They were what? Anthropomorphic, human-like. What does that mean? The human-like, the, the human characteristics. Yeah. Yeah, many of them went on as to uh, wear clothes, uh, live in towns and cities, uh, interact with people as well as their own immediate acquaintances, and, and so on. But sometimes they wouldn't have clothes, but they would have just a tie. They would get like a collar and a tie, like Yogi Bear or Snagglepuss or Boo Boo. The, the, majority, the majority of them um, were, were fully clothed. Well, I mean, they have fur, right? So. Hmm? Well, they have fur, like animals do. They don't need clothes. Yes. So did you like Snagglepuss? Because he was a cat. <laughs> um, I, I felt he was a real show-off. 
um, sometimes parroting uh, Shakespeare or some other great poets. Would you, would you like Snagglepuss or Mr. Jinx Bay? I think I think it was a toss-up. Okay, how about Tomcat? Tomcat? Yeah, Tomcat, Tom and Jerry. No, I didn't. I didn't like those. Cartoons because they were more prone to violence and malice uh, against um, um, the two mice, uh, Jerry and Toppy. Uh, uh, Toppy, I think his name was. But I didn't like how uh, how Tom the cat was always uh, pursuing them because he because he would wind up in uh, um, you know disastrous situations at the end of the story. Uh, as a as sort of a punishment for um, his malice. So they, they had quite a few cats, Hanna Barbera. Um, most of the Hanna Barbera characters started out as being um, three uh, character groups with separate stories within half hour time slots. But then from there, uh, some characters would have a whole half-hour show uh, to themselves. Uh, that, that's how it was with the. Uh, that's how it was with the Winstones and and later uh, the Jacksons. Right. So which which one, which Hanna Barbera cartoon was your favorite? I think the Flintstones. Okay. What, what did you like about Flintstones? Flintstones. Well, well, there you had the central characters that were people, not animals. Um, the Flintstones had. A dinosaur pet, and later on the Rubbles had a kangaroo pet. But uh, but then pet animals behave more like regular animals instead of uh, uh, almost human. So after Hanna Barbera, when do you move on from that? Well, when I was twelve, um, Underdog came along. Now I wasn't in on him from the very beginning. My 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 brothers would watch him and. Uh, he would be immediately before another show that I wanted to see, so that I got the tail end of the underdog episode, so that the uh, curiosity got the better of me, and I began watching underdog. And then um, I wanted to emulate him, but how was I going to how was I going to fly? Then there was a Dennis the Menace comic book, which had a story of his uh, snobbish girl neighbor Margaret uh, taking ballet lessons. And that gave you an idea to do what? Well, that gave me the answer as to uh, uh, how to fly. Um, I, 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 I did dance steps that depicted flight um, within within human limitations. I was not strung up on wires or other apparatus. So it was strictly Margaret that gave you that idea. Yeah. And then from underdog, how? What else do we? Uh, how, how does your Taste and cartoons go from there. How does it develop? Well, as long as there were Hannah Barbera um, cartoon characters around that I had come to admire, I I I always wanted to keep seeing them. But I was seeing older, and uh, well, I wasn't the only one that watched cartoons. My brothers did too. But but there but on Saturdays, Saturday mornings, there would be a sequence of them for several hours. Um, at different shows um, with live hosts and uh, introduction of the cartoons um, so that by the time the last show ended, it could have been about 12 noon and, and my father would scold us for having uh, wasted half the day on... Uh, um, you had two brothers at the time? Uh, at that time, I had two brothers. And you all three, you would watch it together? Yeah. So, do you still enjoy the same cartoons as that, or did, did you add any more? I had a few more, but uh, but because I was getting older, my father was being increasingly critical and uh, and and intolerant. I said before how uh, how both my parents, but 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 much more, my father um, would bear down on me and. Uh, crack down on me to go for reality only. I see. So were you met did they make you stop watching them? Did you have to sneak around? Like what how did that work out? When I was in my early twenties I had my own 
a TV set in my bedroom so I could watch whatever I wanted. But um, but my father would uh, barge into the room, or uh, sometimes one of my brothers did, and then I would get nervous. What, what What's the idea of disturbing my privacy? What are you going to do to me? And my father would growl or shake his head and or, or say, why can't you give that up? Um, so, yeah, um, it was... It was in late 1975 or early 1976 that I still had my own son, but I did stop uh, watching cartoons to to keep my parents off my back. But once you got your own place, you then you can watch whatever you want. You mean once I had my uh, my own home? Yes. Um, yes. But still, my parents would check up on me, and uh, uh, my 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 father was my father was a stern lecturer. But you, you could have watched it. To talk a blue streak for uh, at least a couple of hours without my saying anything, and and uh, and I was uh, I was weighed down and depressed when uh, when when he was finished with me. Since you had your own home, you you still can watch whatever you want, and they didn't have to know about it. Maybe he didn't know about the TV shows I watched, but he would still check up on me. Uh, was I being uh, a, a sensible and a uh, responsible adult. Were you? I I thought I was, but I was regarded as not really an adult if I was still watching um, TV programs meant for children or teens. So you had you had to keep it a secret. Yes. Okay, but what did you watch? Since now we're talking about stuff that you liked, what else did you like? Anything new came out around that time? Was, was that late seventies or? Uh, late seventies, early eighties. So, did you continue watching Hanna Barbera? Was it something new they liked on the, the television? Well, some other, um, some other cartoons, or or also some shows like Sesame Street with puppets would come out that were that were designed to be uh, instructional and informative, not not just not just entertainment or escapist. As my father termed it. Yeah, which which Sesame Street character did you like the best? I I, I really didn't go for Sesame Street. That's just an example of the uh, um, show being educational as well as entertaining. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you watch? I stuck to the shows that were on the weekends because uh, because I started working in uh, Philadelphia in uh, 1973. There were. The Smurfs, uh, a colony of small blue elves who uh, who had some personalities among them and had to learn how to live better lives. Right, that, that's a, originally a Belgian cartoon, I believe. Well, well, it was invented by a man named Peo. I don't know how the I, I don't know if that's the correct uh, uh, pronunciation. It's spelled P E Y O. Right, Pay. That was a, that was a comic artist in Belgium. But that was his. Uh, I believe that was a pseudonym that he used for his art. But what did you like about Smurfs? They were more realistic than uh, many other uh, of the uh, cartoon animals. They were uh, well. They were closer to being human because they were uh, they were elves living together. Yeah. Did you uh, did you like Gargamel's cat? Yeah, I I liked Gargamel's cat, but I didn't like um, Gargamel always being put on the prowl to, uh, uh, to find uh, the Smurfs colony. The only adversary they ever had, and uh, and he was used in just about every story, so it got kind of tiresome. Was he trying to eat him? Is that what it was? We're trying to find him and eat him? What? Was he trying to eat uh, the Smurfs? Who? Hmm. Gargamel. Wasn't that the point he was trying to catch him so he can eat him? Is that, am I wrong? Um, or was he, no, he was trying to turn him into gold, right? That's what it was. Always looking for their colony so he could uh, uh, wipe them out. Right. Yeah. But I think for some reason I thought he was going to eat him. But either that or somehow that stuck in my head, or he was trying to catch him and turn him, and destroy him, and make him turn him into gold somehow. I never heard. I never heard him say that he was trying to turn the first to gold. Well, I, don't know. I haven't seen it in a long time. That somehow stuck in my head. But then, did you like? Uh, was there was a lady Smurf, right? Smurfette. Yes. Did you like her? Yes. And how about Papa Smurf? Well, obviously, 
obviously he was supposed to be the uh, oldest and wisest of the stars. In in the nineties, there was there was a cartoon series that was uh, very timely and also educational. Uh, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Since nineteen seventy, uh, people were uh, becoming um, preoccupied with the environment and and, and how to improve it. Um, so the Planeteers emphasized real life. Uh, pollution problems or other ecological problems and, and how to correct them. So what, what did, did that's why you like them because of their, uh, I guess you would call them green nature. They were, they were much, they were much more realistic. They were, uh, um, although they were fictional, um, they were uh, believable enough to pass for real. Okay. Do you have a favorite? No. You liked all of them, or you just like the idea of them? I, I like all of them. So they, they had, uh, you watched it probably, and you remember better than I do. I kind of know a little bit about it. Um, didn't they have characters from different parts of the world? Like each character was from somewhere else, the planeteer? Each, each planeteer was from a different part of the world, yes. Do you remember how they broke it up? Um, this spirit of the earth uh, summoned them together, uh, endowing them with the uh, uh, magic rings, one one for each earth element. And what, who were they fighting? Like who was the who were the bad guys? Um, um, there was a mad scientist. There was uh, um, there was the litter bug. There was a uh, um, a radioactive mutant. Um, each episode lasted half an hour and dwelt on a specific uh, ecological issue. I see. And then was that popular? Did that run for a long time or was it only a couple of years? I think it ran for at least most of the 90s because there was also the implication that uh, uh, now that it was the 90s, the uh, the environment had to be uh, improved upon, or the environment had to become uh, pure and 100% uh, correct again um, by the time the year 2000 came about. So I guess the planeteers failed their mission. Um, they just, well, they stopped, they stopped showing that show either uh, either the late 90s or uh, or right after the year 2000. I see. So that was your favorite of the 90s? How about 2000? Do you have anything from 2000? I really didn't have um, any favorite cartoons once the 20th century started because uh, all these TV channels were um, uh, grabbing them and uh, uh, making them more difficult to find in the more complex uh, TV systems of the uh, networks and pay-per-views and things like that. Since I was working in those days, um, I was occupied, you know, most of the weekday uh, with my job. And by the time I got home, the cartoons would be gone and you'd be seeing, you'd be seeing game shows uh, or, uh, or, movies originally made for TV or movies that had been in the uh, commercial theater circuit and now had made their way to TV. Right. So, so what do you watch today? Like, what, what are your favorites at the moment? I watch uh, vintage uh, TV shows that that were live, not animated, and, and shown on uh, some cable TV channels. But any cartoons do you, do you enjoy watching? Today, like the present, I I can't find any. Really? All right. So, do we cover everything about cartoons, or do we skip something? And that's well. That's about it. That's about it. I uh, I explained my uh, case history with the uh, cartoons and uh, other forms of uh, of television. Why some uh, were more educational, some were more realistic, um, others were. Discontinued after a while, or like I said, um, 
all time ones were taken away and and you couldn't find them except on the a, a cable channel or um nowadays these um intricate tv systems that uh, uh, take old time shows for reruns all right well that was a that was a good answer and good conversation about cartoons thank you very much for answering that fans question i'm sure they'll be happy to uh listen and and, and get the answer to what they're wondering about so maybe next time we'll discuss television shows like the regular ones well, well you mean live action the right right live action correct yeah Okay, Suzanne. Well, thank you very much for another conversation. And if we have nothing else to add, then um, I will talk to you next time. Okay. Give my regards to the kitty cats. I will. All right. Take care, Suzanne. Okay. All right. Bye.